Okay, YouTubers, we're going to try to make one of those little magnetic grabbers that I can use at work to grab these little tiny parts off the burn table as I'm burning them so they don't fall through and get slag blown all over them. Um, what I've got here is I've got a piece of 5 8 material. I've already faced off the end and chamfered this edge a little bit. I, I uh, center drilled the hole. I got a half inch drill bit ready to drill the hole because those magnets are half inch. I put my little stand in here and preloaded an indicator about three quarters of an inch or so. And I am going to start drilling my hole and as soon as I see that I have the full diameter, I'm going to set this at zero so the needle is right on the zero and then I'm going to go in a half inch actually probably nine sixteenths of an inch just to give a little room in the bottom for some epoxy and then I'm going to shape this and maybe put a bend in it so that it, you keep your hand away from the torch that's doing the plasma cutting and grab the little parts I'm hoping, because the uh, magnets have a little bit of a chamfered edge around them, I'm hoping that I could just hammer this edge in a little bit to help hold the magnet around that little chamfered edge. I don't know if it'll work or not, but uh, here we go. There's the full diameter. Set my indicator to zero. Give a little oil. That's one tenth of an inch. I think I'm just going to go to a half inch because the point of that drill bit will give room for the epoxy. Three tenths, I think. Seems like an awful long way. Oh wait, those things are only a quarter inch thick, not a half inch. That will be probably more than enough. Let's see, that's five hundredths of an inch. Almost a sixteenth, so that's back to where I started, I guess. I guess when you do this stuff, you should make some notes. So now I'm going to reset up, turn this down a little thinner and ouch, a little thinner in there, and then knurl a handle and then put a bend in where it's thinner. Okay, now uh, I made the cardinal sin of not hitting record. I tapered this in here, made it thinner so I can bend it. I set up my knurling tool on center and square. I found it's best if I can blow the chips out of the knurling teeth as it's running. It's going to feed this way. Let's get going. Now, where you start will be messed up a little bit and when it comes off the end it lets the rollers kind of tip a little bit so this ends messed up a little bit 
So what I'll do is I'll turn that smooth there for a little, maybe a quarter inch or so, and same thing back here, then uh, cut a chamfer on, on it. So that's what I'm going to do now. that'll work. Let's take it over to my saw. I'll cut it off. Then I'm going to go to my press and see if I can put a little bend in that. Before I go bending anything, we're going to face off this in and chamfer it and make it look nice. I got it gingerly chucked up on that uh, <laughs> exactly my best work but it'll work. Let's take this over and put a little bend in that so you can get in there close to the machine and not get your fingers into the plasma head. Here we are at my 12 ton press. I got both ends setting in little V blocks. I've just got pressure on there. Let's see if this thing will bend it. Looks like it's bending. I hope it doesn't screw up my knurling too much. I didn't heat it up, but it's working. Trying to judge the angle to see where it will clear the plasma head and still work. I think that'll be fine. It did chew up my knurling right here. And it kind of messed that up too, but I can live with it if it'll help us get these parts out of the machine. Okay, I'm going to clean the inside of this out. Make sure there's no oil or anything in it. And then we'll see about epoxying one of those magnets in there. And then before the epoxy sets up we'll go around this edge and just tap it see if we can't fold that edge in a little bit on the part on the magnet okay i've got some old denatured alcohol solvent i got a i'm always looking for something flat and smooth to mix epoxy on so i've designated this old coffee uh, jug as an epoxy mixer top Got my coffee, that's important. Got some uh, Loctite quick set five minute epoxy. Uh, I gotta get one more thing. I got a brand new uh, acid brush to clean these parts off. I see I've already got some daggone metal shavings on this magnet. Just setting it down over here on the bench. 
Let me get one more thing over here without bumping the camera. A little amble to do my tapping on and my little ball peen. and a q-tip to wipe that out. Okay. I always like to mix the resin first. I don't know how much. Let's put a little more light on this job here. I know how much hardener to put on it. Get equal parts. Which always ends up being way more than I need. But I'd rather have way more than miss it by just a little bit not having enough. Make sure we've got it around the edges. Not that it won't just wipe it all down to the bottom. Plenty in it. Hopefully, we can get it to hydraulically squeeze out the sides. I'll get this in there without that. I didn't want that to happen. We're below flush. Oh, bring, I got the magnet setting right, or the little anvil here setting right over a leg on my bench. Boy, it kind of sticks to that. I would say we've got her peened over the edge, but it's setting back in there about a sixteenth to three thirty seconds of an inch. It still picks up pretty good, but when it sets up and dries, I'm going to carefully grind the edge of this down to get it closer to that magnet. So there won't be such a gap between that part that I'm trying to get and the magnet. Let's see here. This is way bigger than anything I'd ever want to pick up. It almost does it. We're talking about something this big. I bet it'd work right now, but we're going to get it better than this. Clean up my mess, make sure my stick's clean. I always try to wipe as much epoxy off of here as possible so it's smooth. Be back in a little bit when this dries up. All done. Just a little bit of a gap between the, uh, the outside ring and the uh, magnet in there. It might be 32nd or 
as much as a sixteenth. I don't think it's a sixteenth. But if it'll pick that up, it'll pick up anything I'm going to need to pick up at work with this. The whole idea is little tiny parts. My biggest fear now is how hard will it be to snap a little part off of it. Because when you're burning little parts, it's going quick. And you have to be able to get that off there, get the part off, and grab the next one pretty quick. There it is. Not the prettiest thing in the world, but I'm not making them for production. I'm making them to make my life easier. There you go. Thanks for watching.